Well, I care. That's Inyo County and Mono County Animal Resources and Education. They have a final push ongoing. Now, this is to raise funds for a new animal shelter and pet adoption center in Big Pine. I care. President Ted Shady said, quote, the existing Inyo County Animal Shelter was constructed as a milk barn at the county farm in the 1920s and was never intended to be used as a shelter for companion animals. Both Inyo County and I care have invested improvements in the existing facility, but the time has come to move out of the old inefficient, uncomfortable facility and build a new adoption sh shelter and pet adoption center, end quote. Ted Shady also said the effort to construct a new animal shelter is not just about housing lost and homeless pets. It's also about continuing the 15 year relationship between I care and Inyo County to minimize the number of pets that have to be euthanized and maximize the number of pets adopted from the animal shelter. Now, Inyo County estimates that the new shelter and its necessary site improvements will cost about $800,000. The good news is that between iCare, Inyo County, and a generous anonymous donor, about $500,000 has already been raised. iCare hopes that this campaign will raise the remaining $300,000 needed to begin construction. The Raise the Roof, a Cause for Paws fundraising campaign, again, raising the remaining funds needed to build a new animal shelter and will acknowledge donors on a donor recognition wall in a prominent location at the new facility. And the press release from iCare notes that, of course, donations of any amount are welcome and appreciated. Now, if you would like to get some more information on the new animal shelter and pet adoption center and on the Raise the Roof, a Cause for Paws fundraising campaign, hey, you can visit the iCare website site and that's icareforpets.org or give a call to icare at 760-872-3802. Great cause there. Well, Southern California Edison has produced a short historical documentary film on the Agnew Tram. Now, that's located outside of June Lake. Southern California Edison notes that one of the goals of the project was to document this local history and share with the local public, and we're happy to do that here. Sierra Wave TV. People always thought that it was scary, but it never was scary to me. I, it never bothered me one bit. And I was absolutely terrified. I just, I was crying, kicking, screaming, going up there. To ride on the tram is a very unique experience. It's one of a kind. It's, it's better than any Disneyland ride. Another thing they say that if the cable breaks, the speed of the car accelerates so fast you don't have the time to jump off, so you're gonna die. If you jump off, it'll kill you. If you stay on, it's gonna kill you. So you just hope the cable never breaks. Nestled at the base of the Sierra Nevada mountain range lies a unique hydroelectric power generating system. Constructed during an era of growth and advancement in hydroelectric generation, this system was developed in response to the increasing electric demand in California in the early 20th century. Located on the eastern side of Yosemite National Park, on the Inyo National Forest, and hovering above the town of June Lake in Mono County, the system takes advantage of the Sierra's rainfall and snowmelt onto the sharp eastern-facing slopes, providing a continuous supply of water to generate power. This system, called the Rush Creek Hydro System, is a high-head design that consists of four basic components. These include a series of lakes and dams that harness water and carry it through penstocks to a powerhouse located at the base of the mountain range below. The Rush Creek system begins at an elevation of 9,400 feet with a single arch dam that captures water from Wall Lake. It then drops 400 feet in elevation to a second multiple arch dam at Gem Lake before descending another 500 feet to Agnew Dam below. 
Their dramatic drop in elevation increases the pressure of the water's flow through the penstocks before entering the powerhouse, where it turns massive water wheel turbines, generating 48 million kilowatts of power annually. Originally, the Rush Creek hydroelectric system was developed by the Pacific Power Corporation between 1915 and 1925. In 1922, the Pacific Power Corporation dissolved into the Nevada California Electric Power Company, whose name and affiliations changed several times over the years. Ultimately, it was purchased by Southern California Edison in 1964. Today, Southern California Edison operates the Rush Creek Hydro Project under a license from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. The project is managed as an historic district eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Development of the system began in 1915. The system's remote location and elevation required the development of a supply chain and unique tram system to haul the thousands of tons of sand, concrete, and heavy equipment up the sharp vertical terrain. And Rush Creek was quite a feat uh, to build Rush Creek. Uh, uh, it was before my time, of course, but uh, they hold all that material. There was no highway. There was no 395 in, in those days. All that stuff was loaded out in Benton, California, uh, unloaded in Benton and hauled across those big old sand flats to Rush Creek. All the pipe, all the cement, all the, everything. Construction crews worked year-round on rough terrain in often inclement conditions to build this impressive system. By 1917, Pacific Power had completed the powerhouse, penstock lines, and the lower two dams. Two independent sections of inclined cable railways were installed one from the powerhouse to the base of Agnew Dam, and a second from Agnew Lake to Gem Lake above. The cable was just a little over a mile long on the Agnew Tram, and then the Gem Tram was a quarter of a mile. At the top of each tram line, an electric hoist spooled a cable connected to a tram car below, raising or lowering it up the track. The first section of tramway, known as the Agnew Tram, begins at the Rush Creek Powerhouse. Large quantities of sand, cement, and equipment were loaded onto the tram car to be delivered to the construction sites above. Today, Edison workers utilize the tram in the same manner as their Pacific Power counterparts a hundred years before. The original tram was wood? Wood, yeah. yeah. The original car was wood. The old car used to have just four wheels on it with two axles, but they were stable. They just moved up and down. They didn't turn or anything else, so it would go around a corner and pop off a lot. So that's the reason why we decided to make a new car. The new car has struts instead of an axle. It's got uh, eight wheels on it with struts that move up and down and shock absorbers to keep it on the track, keep the tires down on the track.
Boy, a great look there at the Agnew Tram. Some nice local folks in there, and we will be showing the rest of that, including uh, the tracks uh, portion in upcoming broadcasts. We'll be back with a weather report.